Now in this video, we're going to take a look at High Level's community feature. We're going to set up a community from scratch, and we're going to take a look at some of the basic community features that are available inside of high level communities. And then at the end of the video, we'll take a retrospective look back at how courses community and this home area of high levels membership or client portal kind of all come together to create a fairly cohesive ecosystem built directly into high level. Okay, to access our communities, we're going to go into memberships and now we're going to the communities tab at the top. And we're gonna take a look at first, by default, it just drops you into the group section. Before we jump in there though, let's take a peek at our settings to take a look if there's anything else we need to touch. The answer to that is no, it's literally just your domain setup, which is the domain you set up for, or the domain that we set up for our courses, as well as our just general client portal. So let's go ahead and go back and go back to communities under groups and let's dive in and create our first community. The thing to think about with communities is that they are called groups or community groups. I think the reason they went with this terminology was because back when they really started to think about the idea of communities, they were competing with some other tools out there that, that worked in similar ways. And since this way of building communities came out many years ago, we've kind of moved beyond that. They'll hopefully change this terminology in the future, right? This just needs to be create a community, but you will see in a minute, you can have multiple communities. So let's go ahead and give this group a name or this community or subset of our community a name. We'll just call this our, I don't know, call this our tech help community. For branding, once again, they kind of kill you with uh, the options here. You can add a fave icon. I'll add a cover image just so that we have one. Keep adding that same image I've been using from our past ones. I'll leave the logo alone and click create group. Okay, so we have our first community group created. And now you can see that we have members. There's just me. The owner is me. I made my name Doug at last name Convalji. Uh, the status is active on this community. And now I can click login. I'm brought into my community. I can add a bio, a logo for my business here. We'll just open up that one, click save and complete. Cool. So there is our tech help community. It makes sense why they wanted you to have like a little logo icon for it, because if not, it just gives you this random one. So let's actually edit this. So to edit that image, when the community is made, you need to go into your community and go to settings. And then from here, you can choose quite a bit. We'll just jump down to branding really quickly. Uh, we'll just change the fave icon to be that. We'll change the cover image. We already have it set. Uh, the logo for the community is what we're actually looking to change. We'll change that to this. And now you can see on the left, it changed the logo. And if I come back in here and refresh, there we go. It looks a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and configure more of our group now. So the first ones are public versus private here. So anyone can see group posts and other members of the group or private where only members can see the group posts and other members of the group. So we'll go ahead and make it private because we want this to be a private community that someone would have to get access to. Um, we'll click save on that. Subscriptions, obviously uh, this group is currently free. We can add a price, we could say, $20 USD with a seven day trial period, build monthly. Uh, we can turn on test payments and click add price. Oh, and I forgot, I don't have a payment provider integrated. I really should do that. Okay, I've gone ahead and done that. Let's go ahead and come in and set our price. We'll say that it is a recurring fee. We'll do no trial day on that. Um, we'll just say it's monthly. We'll turn on test payments, add a price. We've got our $20 per month membership to this and click save. Branding, we already went through that. Themes. For themes, you can choose between light mode and dark mode. I'm a light mode person, uh, but you can choose different colors for these layouts. This gives me a very like old school Slack vibe uh, to it. I really, I'm going to stay with the default. I'm not a huge fan of any of those. Uh, membership questions. You can add questions if people want to join. You can add gamification. You can set different levels for the gamification and rewards. So you can go ahead and add rewards and update your different gamification levels if you want to. Uh, links, you can add links inside your community for like promos. So I could put this to like book a call. You can choose whether it's a private link or not. Uh, it's visible only to group members, sure. So you can say add a link there. Uh, content that gets reported uh, by members and then there's the discovery section. Um, so discovery is, they have this thing at high level called collab, which is basically like the ability to like share your community on this platform. So if I go to this like go collab, section here it's it, it's basically like a way that they've been able to like add this to an app um, but you can find your community in the collab community i'm just going to turn that off because i would never want my community on there personally that's just me 
Um, I would actually go with like a private paid app on my own, um, which we'll go over maybe in another video uh, if you're interested. Um, but that's, that's the settings. I'll go ahead and click save on that to configure the basics of our community. So now inside of our group here, this is the way that communities function in high level inside of our group. So we've got groups and groups have channels. So we have our announcements channel. I could add another channel that says, you know, tech help or tech discussion, tech help discussion. Maybe that sounds good. And then I can just leave the icon alone or I can choose one rocket. Perfect. Uh, the channel will be private and then we'll just click create channel. So now we have our announcements and our tech help. You can add different types. I can make a post here inside the tech help discussion. You can see that's where it is here. You can choose to add a, a GIF and they've integrated with a GIF library of all kinds of wacky stuff. You can add an image, a video. I think that this is the first component of high level communities that I think are a little bit kind of meh, so to speak. I think this editor is very rudimentary. So if I say this is the editor, I don't have any WYSIWYG settings here. Um, if I want to highlight something, I can add a link to that text, which is no different than this add link option down here. If I wanted to bold it, I could use like control or command B, but I'm, I'm really missing the WYSIWYG editor that I have in other communities. I really like what I have inside of a circle as an example. Um, but suffice it to say, I think this is pretty basic and I hope they improve it, but that is what it is. So I'll go ahead and click post. You can see it puts my name and I have the three dots as an admin. I can uh, delete, pin, copy, edit, etc. If I click into it, I can leave a comment. I have all those same editing controls. And there you go. Not uh, not the worst I've seen in terms of uh, posting comments and, and replies. And, and it's not the best I've seen. All right, so that's the posting interaction. So I can come in here to announcements. I can click on the gear, for example. Uh, I can change settings for the announcement section. Um, all that fun stuff. You can edit all of those individuals by clicking the gear and changing those settings. In the top right, I can click on chat and I can click start chatting if I've selected a person. So you could chat, which is kind of like direct messaging. I wish they would just call it direct messaging myself. Um, but as an admin, I can add more channels here. And then we'll come back to learning. Members is like a member directory. Events, you can add an event. So we could call this like office hours. And you can make the color whatever you want. Make it like a purple color. Um, sure, it's a recurring event. Repeats once a week on, let's just say Fridays. The start time would be like Friday the 20th. And it'll be, sure, an hour. Whatever, that sounds good. We'll just say ends never. Uh, and you know what? We won't make it a recurring event. We'll just say the location. That's kind of cool. You can put Zoom, Google Meet. You can put others. Uh, insert the Zoom link, which is pretty good. You can add a description. Uh, you can hide the location from non-attendees, meaning they can't get the Zoom link until they've RSVP'd. Who can attend the events? You could say members at level 10. That's called gamification for you. Um, or you can just say all members who are paying. We set up the $20 a month. You could say remind members by email one day before the event. That's fine. And you can add like a rectangular image, 800 by 400. We'll just drop one in here. I'll just go into my course imagery there and click next. Uh, you have to add a link. We'll just choose other so Doug's house. Join us. Click next payment details. You can choose to make it a paid event, which I thought is pretty cool or a free event. We'll just create it. And there it is. I can click on that and I can choose to add it to my different calendars as the admin. I can edit this and as a member, I can choose to uh, come in here in RSVP. Again, I think this comes down to also just some polishing. I don't think this looks amazing. I would make this wider. I'd get rid of this inner scroll bar some polishing that needs to go on there, but it's pretty good actually for just a basic events feature. The leaderboard is just more gamification. And then the about section is just, again, more about the community and you can actually upload like a video or an image to tell people about the community as well as write a little bit about it here. Now, as far as community features go, that is pretty much it for within the community itself. And while I'm here, by the way, remember how I added that private link. There it goes right there. I thought that was pretty good. Um, okay, so in terms of community features, that's the gist of it. Maybe even more than the gist, that is it. But I want to go back real quick and talk about how this whole groups thing works. So if I, on the left-hand side, I go to groups. Again, groups are like full-fledged communities, right? So I could add multiple groups in here, which means add multiple communities if I had one. Um, so someone could belong to like a community dedicated to a course of yours, in which case 
I would, on this one, go up at learning and say, I want to add a course. This is my marathon course. That's the one we made in the uh, previous uh, video all about the courses feature in high level. Uh, you can say all members have access. So basically, if they buy access to this community, they're going to get access to the course. That's how you combine the two together. And here's where you could choose to make it one time recurring, etc. So we could say it's a $20. Um, by the way, I don't know if I, that was kind of confusing earlier. Course access means like who has access to be able to get this course. We'll say this one's $20, put it in test mode. So then we could add the course to the community here and you could easily come into it, click open. There's the course. You can click start course, get into it from there. Now this can be a little bit confusing by creating a course here. A couple things happen. So no matter what, anyone inside of this group or community gets access to this course. However, you can create, and I don't know why they do it this way. Um, if you choose the subscription type, again, subscription makes it it's very strange, but if you call this like a, a recurring or one-time product and you create the product here, it will actually here under uh, payments products, add this as a product. Whereas we also added our tech help community as a product when we created it, it was that $20 a month recurring product. These are all getting added inside of here. So that's kind of strange uh, in general that it adds it in there. I think there's some work to do on their part, streamlining this. Now we created the tech help community, which was one group. I could add another group in here just really quickly to give you an idea for what that looks like. Okay, so here it is real quick. I just created a second group called mastermind group. So now that I have the mastermind group made, if I go under groups, you're gonna see that I have the mastermind group and the tech help community. And each of these different communities, or <laughs> there we go, I kind of like spoiled it, right? Uh, they are different communities. So each of these groups is a different community. You can see here under groups, under the mastermind group, under learning, there's no courses associated with this one. Members obviously is the same. There's no events. The leaderboard has no rewards configured. There's no about stuff here. This one's a free public group. If I go back to the tech help community, here's my posts here. Here's the courses that are included, members, etc. So really we have this like semi quasi infinite community capability here. And now if I return to the home screen here on our client portal, you can see it starts to look better the more people have. Uh, it's kind of basic otherwise, but here on the home screen, you can see that um, I'm in the mastermind group community. You can see why it would be good to have an image. I'm in the tech help community. Um, I've, I'm taking a course. I can complete my course or I can you know, explore other lessons in it. On the left-hand side here, I can join groups maybe I'm not in, right? So I can go to the mastermind group and I can join this one. I can go back to the home screen. I can take a course browse all the courses. There is one thing I'll point out um, that I think is currently a bug. And I've been doing some research trying to figure out if it's a bug or not, but I've logged in as, as users that have no access to courses. And when you come to this page here, all courses and my courses show nothing unless you actually have courses. So I thought that was kind of strange. Um, I feel like all courses should show them. And then when they click into them and they don't have access, they can buy them. I personally feel that. Um, so just a heads up on that. That's currently at the time of recording this, a bug, I think. Um, and then from here, or you could click view all groups. And again, it's going to bring you in here and you're going to see all the groups in here. So to wrap up this video, uh, I want to give some quick thoughts on this whole setup. Uh, one, I'll, I'll, I'll say the same thing that I said about the, uh, courses component. I feel like when you consider communities and courses and all of that as part of your just normal high level subscription, which for members of Convology, uh, all access, they're paying $50 a month for this. Otherwise you could be paying $97 a month or, you know, $297 or $497, depending on your plans. Um, but let's just say through the $97 plan, you're getting courses, a community platform, all the other high level features. It's really hard to beat that pricing. So I can see why this is super enticing. Now, personally, um, I'll, I'll probably do like a maybe I will, maybe I won't, a video comparing high level and things like Circle, Shirtash, and all those other uh, tools that I talk about on my channel. Do I feel like this is a great solution? I, I feel like it's a, a worthwhile solution to look into if you're doing courses. And I feel like that's a really big component of, of the high level community ecosystem is this ability, um, here, I'll put myself in a pip here, is this ability to go under groups and be like, okay, I'm in the tech help community and that came with access to 
you know, these three tech help courses. And I'm also part of the mastermind group. And that came with access to, I don't know, this business education course and these five things, or maybe you're like a, a, a educator and you help parents with tools to educate their kids and stuff like that. You would come in here and say, okay, I'm going to join the group for kindergartners. I'm going to join the group for third graders. And in the future, I see there's one for, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh, eighth. Each of those comes with learning modules that I can join and get access to for my kids. Okay. That makes perfect sense to me. That's the perfect setup for someone who's running a high level community combined with, with a learning component, because without that learning component, I kind of really feel like this is, um, not a half baked, but I feel like it's an incomplete experience because of how they've got it broken out into these groups. The groups themselves are very goal oriented just by the way that this whole thing is set up. And so I feel like as a result of that, you have to be oriented that way as well. Otherwise I would personally not even consider this, even if it's, even if it's essentially included in your subscription, I would go with another platform uh, only because this is geared that way. So if someone were to say, Doug, how, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate the communities feature inside a high level? Well, first off, if you saw it a year or two ago, it would have been like a two out of 10. Now we're like a seven out of 10. And I hope as we go through the next year, this is going to become an eight, nine, uh, maybe a 10 out of 10. Again, I think you need that learning component, the course component that comes included with it to really elevate this uh, to where it would be worth using. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into the communities in High Level. I encourage you to check out the courses video that I did for High Level as well if you haven't already.